The consolidation method is important to pass the FAR exam, and I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about it. In this video, we're going to talk about the key journal entry for the consolidation method. Then we're going to talk about a subsidiary and parent example to show you the real journal entries. Then we're going to talk about a full goodwill example. So the idea is that you walk away knowing how to solve any kind of consolidation method question you may face on the exam. So first we need to ask, when do we need to consolidate? When a parent owns more than 50% of a subsidiary, it is required to consolidate the subsidiary's activity into the parent's activity. The next question is, why do we need to consolidate? The reason is, since the parent owns a majority of the company, it has the majority ownership over all the assets of the company. Therefore, it needs to include all of the company's activity in with the parent's activity. So you consolidate the accounts together, but there are certain accounts that you can't consolidate together, so you need to remove, such as the parent's investment and the subsidiary's equity, which we'll understand a little bit better later on. So now let's talk about the consolidating journal entry. You're going to want to memorize this backwards and forwards. So first we have to get rid of the subsidiary's equity account. So we're going to debit out the equity accounts. Then we have to get rid of the parent's investment in the subsidiary by crediting their investment. If we have a fair value increase of the subsidiary's assets, we're going to debit this amount. If we don't own 100% of the subsidiary, we're going to have a non-controlling interest, which is a credit. And then our final entry is going to be a goodwill debit or a bargain purchase if it's a credit balance. So make sure you memorize this entry and know that in any consolidation, you're going to have these first two entries. And then depending on the situation, you might have these additional entries. So now let's take a look at this first example with a parent company and a subsidiary. And we're going to see the resulting journal entry that we have. So now we're going to go through an example to where a parent company buys 100% of a subsidiary. So let's first consider their balance sheets before the purchase occurs. So we have the parent company, they're going to have 400 of cash and 400 of equity. And then the subsidiary is going to have 250 of cash and then 250 of equity. So these are their balance sheets before the purchase. So now that we know what the balance sheets look like for both companies, let's imagine that the parent company buys 100% of the subsidiary for $250. So from the parent's perspective, we have an investment of 250. So it's a credit to cash of 250 and a debit to investment of 250. So now who does that 250 cash payment go to? So it does not go to the subsidiary itself. It goes to the owners of the subsidiary. So before we purchase it, it is owned by other shareholders. So we're going to pay that amount to the other shareholders to now have ownership of the company. So from the subsidiary's perspective, nothing changes. There's no initial journal entry. It's simply that the subsidiary is now owned by the parent company instead of by the external owners. So now let's see what the company's balance sheets look like after the purchase. So the parent company credited cash for 250 and debited investment. So it has this investment of 250 and nothing changed on the subsidiary's balance sheet. So then we get to year end and we have to make the consolidating entry. So we're going to have to remove the subsidiary's equity and the parent's investment. So we're going to debit the subsidiary's equity of 250 and credit the parent's investment in the subsidiary for 250. That's because we cannot own ourselves and we can't have equity in ourselves. So we're going to eliminate both items. So then the consolidated equity is 400 and consolidated cash is 400. So this amount will show up in the consolidated financial statements. My FAR exam review course includes everything you need to know to pass the FAR exam. This includes over seven hours of video lectures, just like this consolidation accounting lecture. This also includes over 20 task-based simulations on the key topics you need to master and a fully comprehensive FAR textbook. So check out my FAR course to see how it can help you with FAR today. So now we've gone through this basic example, let's look at a more complicated example that includes goodwill accounting. So in our previous example, we paid $250 for the company and its carrying value was 250. Let's imagine that we instead pay 400 for the company. So it's carrying value is 250, but we're paying 400. So why would we pay more than the carrying value? Well, there are two reasons. 
One is because the fair value of the assets could be higher than the carrying value. So the carrying value is what GAAP requires the assets to be reported at, but maybe they could be sold for a higher amount. Therefore, whenever we purchase a company, we're going to see how much of our purchase price is for the fair value increase of the assets. And then we're going to have goodwill, which is the difference between the purchase price and the fair value of the company. So in this example, 250 of what we're paying for is the carrying value of the company. 50 of what we're paying for is the fair value increase that we couldn't record throughout the year, so we have to record in the consolidating entry. And then $100 of what we're paying for is goodwill. So in other words, if we were to buy the company and then instantly sell all the assets, we would probably make 300. So then why would we pay more for the company? We pay more because of the future earnings potential of the company. That's what goodwill comes down to. So now let's see how this example of the parent company purchasing the subsidiary for $400 affects the balance sheets. So the parent company spends 400, so it credits cash for 400 and debits investment for 400. The subsidiary does not have an initial entry. And then let's ask what happens at year end. So at year end, we need to eliminate 100% of the subsidiary's equity. So we need to debit their equity for 250. And then we need to get rid of the parent company's investment of 400. So then we notice if we stop here, it doesn't balance. So then we have to go back to this chart and see that 250 of what we spent was for the carrying value of the company, which is this equity amount of 250. So then $50 of what we spent was for the fair value increase of the assets. So we're going to debit fair value increase of the subsidiary's assets of 50. So we're only allowed to record this fair value increase at year end with this consolidating entry. So then if we spent 400 and the fair value is 300, then 100 of what we spent is for goodwill. So we're going to add the goodwill asset to the consolidated balance sheet. So then here is the consolidated balance sheet. We eliminated the investment, added a $50 increase of fair value, we added the goodwill of 150, and we eliminated all of the subsidiaries' equity accounts. So by now, I hope you have a much better understanding of consolidation accounting. Best of luck with your studies. Thanks for watching.